All right, folks, let's get started. Uh, this is week five. This week, we're going to be having um, lots of stuff. Very busy week. We're going to have uh, our exam number one. Our exam number one is going to consist of 40 questions, multiple choice, true and false, and, and uh, fill in the blank. Um, has been modified from the original one to reflect chapters one, two, eight, nine, and six that we, we had specified or before. Um, I do have a review on on the um, okay. I have a review on the module, and you guys can go over it and and see that uh, what's going to be there. We go. Exam number one review. You guys can go over it, and um, there's. Like I said, a 40 question quiz, I'm sorry, 40 question exam based on some of the quizzes that you've done in the past uh, and some of the questions that are just, you know, basic comprehension. The study guide will give you an idea of uh, what's going to be on that exam. Not too, not too hard, but uh, once again, I do uh, believe in comprehension, so they will be directly correlated to co how much you com comprehend it and taking in from those chapters. All right, so let's go back to the lesson for lesson 27. And we're going to go over lesson 27 pretty quick. Uh, reason is that I uh, um, do not want to take time from the reading that it's going to require, but I will I'll give you guys an overview of what we'll be expecting. Um, I do expect you guys to to know what a web form is and what the purpose of it is in the websites. Also, to um, in, in, I'm going to emphasize how important and some of these attributes or some of these elements when web form are going to be once we start doing JavaScript and once we start doing CSS. Uh, very briefly, we're going to talk about. There we go. Very briefly, we're going to discuss how the form element opens with a, a form tag. Um, how some uh, elements, for instance, the input tag is going to be used so that we can take in the information, whether it be a text, radio, um, any other uh, styles of elements we're going to be using. Uh, anytime we're going to be taking in information, we do have to have that input tag. Uh, a label tag is going to be reflecting uh, very similar to just you know regular text in in uh, an HTML code. Okay, so I'm reading off my notes here. There we are. Okay, and uh, some common elements. We're not going to go through all of them. I'm going to have just a portion of these basic controls based on what I learned from. Um, the topics of your project. Um, I understand a few of you are going to make an e-commerce, which is a store. A few others are going to make a booking site, and a few others are going to be also. Um, I had one person do an Uber. I had one other person do a betting site. All of those which will require taking in information from a client. Therefore, uh, it is imperative to at least get to understand and know some of these elements that you use in a form so that you can start implementing those in your uh, project. Once again, we're only going to be working with the HTML aspect of the elements, so none of the JavaScript and none of the CSS just yet, um, meaning CSS and cascading style sheets. We're still going to be using CSS in the in style, and you've learned mostly about how to pad using padding and margins and uh, some of the other attributes such as um, formatting the fonts and sizes and the, the, the headings, uh, H1, H2, H3, very, very similar to what you've already been using on your assignments. This would incorporate that in the web form. And I'm going to give you guys a sample as well as what we're going to be expecting on, on the lab for Chapter 5, not to too hard in comparison to what the examples are noted on the book itself. Okay, 
So lastly, we're going to go over some of the labels. Okay, we're going to take a, a slightly different approach on going over the book itself. The uh, book, we're going to jump right into the table, which is at the end of the lesson. The end of the lesson, the reason being is because I want you guys to get to, get to know what they're talking about when you are opening or using these, this terminology. So this terminology here, like for instance, a label um, provides, it's just information. Like I said, it does not take in any anything other than it only gives out information. Like if you're, you're uh, saying that it's an H1 and an H2, H3, but the reason we put label in front of anything that we're going to be providing information regarding to the element that we're going to be using is so that it can be paired. Um, uh, in a little bit, I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Uh, a lot of this stuff is going to be very, very organized uh, so that you guys can start using JavaScript. JavaScript will be the, um, the programming of the logic meaning uh, what it's supposed to do and in the in some cases you can start in uh, creating methods and classes uh, re, uh, according to the type of information you're gonna receive and where you're gonna be putting it uh, receiving it is called is gonna be known as get when every time you receive information that you want to retrieve it from the form is gonna be it's gonna be uh, referred to as get whenever you're gonna have something set um, for instance we're gonna take information from from a form and we're gonna put it somewhere else so in that other place that we're gonna put it is gonna be called referred to as post so uh, a lot of there's a lot of ways we can use these two uh, methods um, get and post uh, when you're using different pages and you want to retrieve, like, let's say, customer information that's already logged in, um, once in the type in their name, you're going to use get to retrieve whatever information pertains to the client, and then you're going to post it on the website so they can view it. So that's what they refer to. It's a little confusing now, but once you get into the um, logic aspect in the JavaScript section, then you'll get a clearer picture of that. But right now, like I said, I want you want you to be concerned about how things look on the front end. Meaning, um, for instance, uh, this is what the viewer sees, and the very same thing that we're looking at on behind the scenes, using elements in a form tag, are creating those objects, and the, the for so that you can distinguish. Uh, from a regular text to where a person actually puts in the information. Right. So yes, chapter 27, I'm sorry, lesson 27 at the very end. Um, just re give this a read over and then we'll go ahead and um, start from the top real quick and I'll go over some of the information. We're going to kind of skim over this. I know it has a lot of information, a ton of information, but if you see any of the forms here, um, you're going to com directly compare that to our assignment, and um, it's not in sentence at all. I do want you to get familiar with the basic, basic basics of web forms, just so that you guys can have a uh, work in progress on your uh, projects. So, okay, let's keep going to our, the beginning of the chapter. I understand this is a lot of information. All right. Once again, we mentioned to create a form, you must use a form tag, and of course, ending it with a slash back. You know, same same way with a slash uh, open and a slash close tag will would uh, create a, a form. Now, another thing here is very probable that you're going to be retrieving and using um, code to like I said, posts from a site or to a site. So if you cl click on the, I should have done that for mine. Okay. 
All right, so most, if not all, forms will require this particular line of code action. We're going to we're gonna omit this section right here because we're not going to take any actions right now on your form. Let me see if I can hit the back button. That was not very clear, but I'm hoping you guys can get the idea. And that wasn't smart at all. Well, apologies for that in the back. In the, in the meantime, um, let's run it real quick. This is an actual actual um, form that we're going to be um, creating. Once again, I talked about how the logic in the front is all HTML. So going through the inspect, you're going to see that a lot of the elements coincide with a regular form or a regular web index html page that you've been doing for all the other assignments the only difference slight difference is that we're going to go ahead and start creating a new action so to create a form we must create a form action uh, you might have to read outside of the book the book does not provide that that healthy example of why you should incorporate this particular line of code, and especially adding the method post, um, I do ask you guys to refer again to the W3 schools. We'll show you uh, the reasoning behind this. But this is also, uh, this is a a code piece of code that you will require when you're going to be creating those forms. So, and we're going down the list and um, mention some labels. Um, another important fact, um, and you'll be reading throughout this throughout the book. Let me see if it went back. Okay. That's not going to be good. Okay. Uh, is that the organization that we're talking about, about, talked about using labels as part of your information that you're going to be including with your fields. So this particular field, um, you have input. So this input tag here is going to specify I'm going to request something from the user. And then I'm going to request a piece of text. And then on that piece of text, this little box, I'm going to call it, and that's your ID, full name. Reason for this, organizational structure, requesting an ID and requesting a name. It'll be very, very important when you start incorporating JavaScript into your code and to identify each and every one of these fields with a different label, different ID number, and a different um, name specified here. Yes, every time you're going to create a uh, text tag, yes, you're going to require a name, uh, an ID, and the, you specify the, the, the particular type of text. So let's see if we've gone back and apologies for the slow computer and browsing at the same time using the recorder. It's taking up my, all my bandwidth. Okay. okay, so let's look at the back end of their code. And we mentioned creating a form form tag uh, we're going to create an action because we're going to be requesting information from a, a customer and we're going to be posting it somewhere else so um, yes it's going to be your opening tag and then I have uh, selected field sets also included in your book and further information that I strongly suggest you, you follow on the W3 schools to have information categorized so that we you can use different elements. For instance, I'm using uh, the text element, which is your the user inputting text. So that was it. Okay. Then for email. I'm creating a label that where I want to want my email. 
I'm going to want uh, to input the information as an email. Reason for that is it's going to using an email type of input is going to look for the at symbol and the dot com at the end to verify that it's actually an email. And these are um, name naming conventions that are already prefabricated within the code. So whenever you're using um, some of these elements that are recognizable by your IDE. For instance, it's already highlighted in blue. It knows that it's an email. This is an email. This is an email when you type in email. Same thing goes with a phone number. Phone number is going to re require, you know, the, the area code and, and uh, the uh, phone number. So address is just a text, 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 input fields. And the directory reflect the front end as text fields, text fields, text fields, text fields, text fields, text field, and the additional intake form that you're using. All right, I'm going to go into a little bit more in depth, like I said, chat lesson 27, skim over. There will not be an, a quiz regarding this, but the lab assignment that I'm going to ask you guys to do um, is going to have some, these base, very, very same basic um, input types and labels. So um, stay tuned for the lab portion of our lecture.